Next, we'll move on to item 1.6, a presentation on dark store loophole property tax shift by Kurt Watinsky, uh, the Deputy Executive Director of the League of Municipalities. Kurt, please come forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, good evening everyone. My name is Kurt Watinsky. I'm Deputy Director of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. I understand the city of Sheboygan has uh, has plans to have a referendum on the ballot in April asking voters whether they approve asking the legislature to close the dark store and Walgreens loopholes. I'm here to give a little explanation, uh, a little background about the dark store and Walgreens uh, property tax loopholes and answer any questions the council may have or the mayor may have. And so to start out with though, what I'd like to do is we have at our association, and just by the way, so I, I'm here from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. We're an association of all the cities in the state, including the city of Sheboygan, and all the villages also. So there are 190 cities and about 413 villages. And also by way of background, last fall, last November, 17 counties and about six municipalities conducted referendum on the same issue, and they all passed uh, overwhelmingly most, most close to 90%, some between 70 and 90%, asking the legislature to close the dark store and the Walgreens loopholes. Now, let's talk a little bit about what those loopholes are. And I'd like to start out with this uh, a video that our association has prepared, uh, basically to educate the public about this tax issue. If there are big box or other chain retailers in your community, your property taxes may be going up. That's because certain commercial properties have been able to obtain special tax reductions. Perhaps you've heard of these tax breaks. They're known as the dark store and Walgreens loopholes. Unless the state legislature closes these loopholes, other property owners, including homeowners, will pay an average of 8% more in property taxes. Even more in some communities. Communities like the town of Grand Chute, Ashwaubenon, Sheboygan, West Bend, Franklin, Pleasant Prairie, Sun Prairie, La Crosse, and Rice Lake. You see, the total amount of property taxes a local government may collect is strictly limited by state law. The size of the property tax pie stays pretty much the same from one year to the next. What can and does change is how the pie gets divided. When one kind of property, like big box stores, pays less, other kinds, like residential and mom-and-pop businesses, pay more. Let's take a closer look at the dark store loophole. Attorneys for big box chains claim that a brand new store in a busy area has the same value for tax purposes as a vacant, boarded-up, dark property located in an unpopular location. Here's an actual example. A low store in Wauwatosa is assessed for taxes at $13.6 million. Lowe's claims it's only worth $7.1 million, yet Lowe's spent in excess of $16 million to acquire the land and build the structure. Lowe's argues that even the land was devalued from $9 million to $3 million once the big box store was constructed. And Lowe's insists its store can only be compared to vacant dark stores for property tax purposes. Ironically, as big box stores fight for a smaller share of property taxes, they use more municipal services. Big box stores demand more police, fire and ambulance service than other commercial properties, and way more than residential properties. Every day, municipal police, fire, and ambulance respond to calls from big box stores. Meanwhile, the cost of paying for these services gets shifted to homeowners, the class of property using these services the least. The other loophole is called Walgreens after a 2008 Wisconsin Supreme Court decision. That ruling allows national pharmacies and other businesses who lease their store to claim the value of their properties, for tax purposes, is less than half of the actual sale price. Here's another real example. Walgreens challenged the city of Oshkosh's assessment of its store. The Court of Appeals, relying on the 2008 decision, decided that the value of the Walgreens property was $2.2 million, much less than the $4.3 million actual 2009 sale price of the property. 
other taxpayers, mainly homeowners, now have to cover Walgreens' former share of the taxes. Plus, Oshkosh taxpayers had to pay the corporation a tax refund of $69,500. Nearly 300 pharmacies in Wisconsin can take advantage of this loophole, including stores in Ashland, Onalaska, Dodgeville, Beaver Dam, Weston, Appleton, and Sturgeon Bay, and in your neighborhood. Other commercial and manufacturing businesses that lease their space are also beginning to use this same loophole. Only the Wisconsin State Legislature can stop this unfair tax shift. Tell your state legislators to restore fairness and common sense to the property tax system by closing the dark store and Walgreens loopholes. Call your state legislator through the legislative hotline at one 800 362-9472 or visit darkstoreloopholes.org. All right, that's a that's a fairly good 30,000 foot explanation of a fairly complex topic. What we're talking about is how do assessors for cities, villages and towns because they're the ones who are responsible determine the fair market value of certain commercial properties. And we have some fundamental differences of opinion between uh, property owners like big box stores and their tax attorneys and municipal assessors around the state and municipalities. And that fundamental difference of opinion is over the, the tax strategy that are being employed by these property owners, commercial property owners for the most part, is resulting in tax shift over to other tax uh, property taxpayers. So just let me give you a perfect uh, example everyone can understand. Um, if you and your neighbor are sharing the cost, and I'm going I'm to bring this down really fundamental level. We're not even going to talk about property taxes. We're just going to talk about other things. If you and your neighbor are sharing the cost of a pizza, and you say, I will pick up two-thirds of that cost. I'll pay for this tonight. Uh, say it's a $20 pizza, I'll pay $15. And your neighbor says, initially says, okay, but then looks at his wallet and says, you know what, I only have three, $3, so I can't contribute the full $5. So what happens? It's still $20 pizza, and it still has to be paid for, so you have to pick up it. So it's the cost, more of the cost shifts over to you. That's what's happening with some, as a result of these tax strategies that big box stores and stores and medium box stores like Walgreens and CVS that use uh, two different tax strategies that I'll explain in a little more detail. The person who's picking up more of the cost of the pizza are in Wisconsin for property tax purposes are homeowners because already homeowners in Wisconsin pay 68 to 70% of the total property tax levy. So the rest of the property taxes, 30%, are paid by agriculture, manufacturing, and commercial. So whenever anyone on the agriculture, commercial, and manufacturing side of property taxpayers figures out a way to pay less, then other taxpayers have to pick it up. And really, the only, the only group that's left, for the most part, are the 70% of homeowners who are paying property taxes. So that's what we're talking about here, is trying to avoid more of the property tax burden from shifting from one class of property, commercial, over to another class of property, homeowners. The other thing we're talking about here, especially on the Walgreens side, and I just want to kind of give a 30,000 foot level look at this uh, tax uh, evasion uh, effort is right now as a result of this 2008 Wisconsin Supreme Court decision that Walgreens won against the city of Madison in 2008 it was referenced in that video we have a situation where um, property like CVS stores and Walgreens are selling so the real estate is selling for between four million and eight million in Wisconsin that's that's the going uh, fair market value right now. Mainly investors are buying those properties. Pools of investors will buy them. But they have to be assessed as a result of that Wisconsin Supreme Court decision in 2008 at r roughly half of that amount. So they're assessed at between 2.1 and 3 million and they're selling on the uh, on the market for between 4 million and 8 million. So if your home uh, Maybe your home is uh, assessed at you know 250 to 300 million, and you think you could sell it. This is Ma I'm sorry, I'm used to Madison prices. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. 
your, your home, uh, not million, 250 to 300,000, and, and uh, you, your neighbor sells for 300,000 and, and you just bought your home for 305,000, but you argue to your assessor, well, it really should be half of that. My assessed value for property tax purposes should be more like 150,000. You'd be laughed out the door. But that's exactly what's happened as a result of that 2008 decision for commercial leased uh, properties, which are, that's how Walgreens and CVS own 80% of those properties are, are leased, they're not owned, and they're relying on an argument that their lease, the amount that they actually pay uh, to the owner is above market and shouldn't be calculated or, or considered as part of the determination that, a, that an assessor takes in, the information an assessor takes in to determine the value of the property. So would you mind showing that? Um, that? So, so here, here's what I was, some examples from around the state of Walgreens and CVS assessed versus uh, sale values. And you can see uh, the sale values range from, you know, 4.2 million to 8.7 million, but the assessed values are 2.4, well, really just hover around 2.4 to 3.4 million. So we have two pieces of legislation. Our association worked with legislators last session to introduce in the, in the uh, legislature. And the first piece of legislation would close the dark store loophole, which is uh, a loophole that mainly big box stores are using. And, and their tax attorneys argue before the assessor that their, their assessed values are too high because you shouldn't uh, look at us as an open, thriving store in a good location. You should value us as if we were a closed, vacant store that's no longer in a popular location. And, and that argument is, is winning in other states around the country. It is not, the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court have not totally bought in in Wisconsin, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we've introduced legislation to just make it crystal clear to courts and to the assessor and to property owners that it's not appropriate to use dark or vacant stores and, and the sale prices of those stores to determine the fair market value of a, of a thriving open store. And so our bill basically just says exactly that. It says that the appropriate comparables for a, a, a store or any property has to be of similar age, similar size, um, maybe a similar retail, but also if it's dark and vacant, it, that's not an appropriate comparable for something that's open. Okay, so that's, that's one piece of legislation that got introduced last session. Our other piece of legislation would reverse this 2008 Walgreens decision by basically telling assessors that it's appropriate, it's okay to look at the actual rent that a commercial leased uh, property is paying, uh, and, and, what, and also it's okay to use recent sale prices of that property when trying to determine the value of that property uh, for property tax purposes, that you don't throw out that information or pretend it doesn't exist. So those are our two bills. Last session they were introduced, as I said, we had overwhelming support among legislators, including legislators from the Sheboygan area, like uh, Senator Lemehu Le Le and uh, Representative Kotsma. So um, we had 84 co-sponsors on our dark store bill. And there's only 132 legislators in the, in the state legislature in both houses. And then we had 62 uh, legislators sign on to our Walgreens reversal bill. So you're probably wondering, well, why didn't those bills pass if they had overwhelming support? Well, that's a good question because they also had very strong opposition. And the opposition, as you might imagine, are businesses who are currently taking advantage of these, the kind of current state of the law and naturally do not want to see those loopholes or those tax strategies closed. So. Um, we were not able to get over that opposition, and leadership in both houses were not convinced that uh, it was necessary to schedule these bills for uh, vote, so uh, we did not get a vote in either the Senate or the Assembly. It came out of a Senate committee unanimously, and I also want to emphasize that these were uh, bills that were supported by, by had huge bipartisan support, so we had strong Republican authors and Republican supporters, as well as many Democrats on the bill. It's probably one of the only policy issues in the state capitol in the last year and probably this year that uh, cross over partisan lines and that we have, have support from both Republican and Democrats on a, on a, on a, on a significant uh, substantive policy issue. Um, so 
this session, flat, flash, flash forward to this session, what's the, what's the status? So the same authors that we had last session uh, are with us and are introducing a bill, and they're actually going to uh, circulate their bill for co-sponsors, asking other legislators to sign on to that bill in the next week or so. And instead of two bills this session, we've decided to go with one bill and, and, and address both issues in one bill. It's less confusing, and we just think it makes more sense. And so we anticipate we'll have uh, all, uh, similar strong bipartisan support, but uh, you never know. And so referendum questions on the ballot where citizens can um, communicate to their legislators by voting yes on whether they want the legislature to address these issues by passing legislation are critical and, and, and lend support and political pressure on addressing this issue. Um, also, another thing that's changed from last session is that uh, Governor Evers, new governor, has publicly told us and also said it uh, in a number of other forums that he will include in his budget both these bills, the language out of both of these bills in, in his budget, which he's going to introduce next week on February 28th. Uh, so we anticipate we'll have two um, ways for the legislature to pass Dark Store and, and Walgreens legislation, either by separate piece of legislation that will be introduced probably the next three weeks, or a budget bill that will be, language will be in the budget uh, that will be introduced in, in a week and a half. And um, so we're very hopeful that this session um, we'll be able to uh, pass legislation that creates a fair uh, tax system and, and uh, addresses the kind of the inequities between uh, which classes of property are paying property taxes and, 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 and which, pro which are avoiding uh, paying some and shifting some of their uh, bills onto other taxpayers. Thank you.